Oh, so uh, on behalf of um, the World Data Center for Remote Sensing of the Atmosphere, uh, I say hello and welcome to this event. Um, well, um, comparing to, to um, uh, the figures uh, mentioned before, um, uh, well, we are speaking to, to much smaller numbers, in fact, in our, ins in our institution than uh, uh, having worldwide revenues of billions of dollars. But however, let's start with, the, with our mission statement from the World Data Center for Remote Sending and the Atmosphere. So our mission statement is to provide free, simplified, standardized, and sustainable access to atmosphere-related satellite-based data, satellite-based information, value-added products, and services for science, for administration bodies, and also for private users institutional users, universities, and also for private, for industry. Um, our portfolio uh, consists of um, three portions. So one is the data archiving system. Uh, another portion is dealing about services. So I will talk about those both aspects uh, uh, soon. And moreover, everything is combined with research and um, development and combining all those three colors, red, green, and blue, yields white. So yields a consistent <laughs> view uh, of what we are offering. So what we are dealing, with, what we're dealing about is the uh, World Data Center for the most sending of red. <laughs> so please consider satellite instruments gathering data and information on board of the satellite. They just collect binary information like zeros and ones. Um, and uh, this information is then done down to earth, processed into level one data, um, yielding physical quantities um, already, and converted into level two information, which is uh, essentially uh, the, the, um, gives the footprints um, combined with, for example, um, ozone. Uh, and combined with numerical models, where also non satellite data is being injected, um, level three and level four value added products are generated. For example, regarding ozone, uh, ozone is measured in modern satellite, <laughs> is then uh, transferred into intensities at a given location, converted to uh, ozone color densities at locations. Um, and uh, on the ground, combined uh, to yield synoptic distributions as uh, obtained from satellite data, and uh, ingesting additional information from, from models uh, turned to, to value to level four data products, um, such as, for example, the ozone production. Uh, let's have a look to, to our ozone service at WBCR. Uh, so this is the um, um, history of um, a few of some years of um, uh, matter A from two observations. Um, and this is the extent of the ozone hole and it's reactivated. So you see that usually in, in August it starts to grow, in September it peaks and it declines until December. And last year was probably yeah, a bit smaller than the average. This is the maximum extent of last year's ozone hole um, as a level four product, as a level four product. And this is the current situation from a few days before. So uh, this, here in um, red part, you see the ozone production in the equatorial regions. And um, here, already quite close to the south pole, uh, you see the ozone, the chemical ozone loss uh, due to the Preconditioned atmosphere and due to the cold uh, in that region. So the ozone hole already starts growing. In general, <coughs> uh, at WDCR, that we have um, a relatively complicated product. That means, um, in case of satellite products, we have the uh, spatial extent. Um, and uh, when, when regarding model outputs, uh, we also have a vertical dimension. So 
that means that we have um, uh, information on uh, different levels of the atmosphere. And uh, moreover, we have the dimension of time. So, um, in order to explore um, the products uh, that we offer, we have to um, navigate through a four dimensional um, system. And uh, therefore, we build up a tool which is um, doing this essentially a WMS uh, web service, uh, where you, on the one hand side you can select a product which you want to visualize, um, and you can interactively um, choose the color scale, um, you, you can choose the dates, and so on. All this can be done interactively in order to support real data exploration. Um, for example, we use this to depict the model result, um, the air quality um, on, on different European scales. So this is the uh, Copernicus, the official Copernicus Mac uh, ensemble result, uh, which we provide on a daily basis as a forecast. Um, this is a regional scale model which we run at DLR, uh, depicting the uh, also the NO2 concentration on a, on a more regional level, and uh, this is the local level uh, where we can see the town of Munich, where we actually live at. This is another town in Augsburg, and uh, you see the energy pollution induced by the major roads. Um, all this you can uh, you can go through the data set in attitude uh, and interact. Moreover, we tried to, or we uh, did some investigations on uh, how to disseminate our products uh, in a more um, compatible way, compatible to the public. And uh, therefore, we also tested out uh, some activities uh, regarding apps, um, <laughs> which are available currently in the Play Store and in the Apple App Store. Um, this was uh, a project um, with some uh, industry cooperation, um, German company, uh, T Systems, the uh, uh, T Mobile, and uh, some other institutional users. We together uh, set up in, uh, such an app service, um, um, giving information on app quality in your, at your particular location. Well, and just gathering data is useless when not uh, so, so we, our goal is to use the data and make the data available for further usage. So this morning we already heard that only 3% of the data is reused later on. So we want to make data access as easy as possible. That's why we uh, set up our interactive tools. And uh, moreover, we in, our, in, in the institute perform research activities with this data and we uh, explicitly um, wish to have as long as possible time series in order to derive trends and in order to derive a good picture of the environment. Especially regarding uh, satellite astronomers. It's always a pity that some clouds, um, for example, um, inhibit the, the, the correct determination of the NO2 loading in the atmosphere. NO2 is a trace gas which is um, uh, induced by anthropogenic behavior, like the fuel burning, and it's usually quite close to, to its emission site because it's decaying relatively fast in the atmosphere. Um, and this is a um, seven years average of uh, tropospheric NO2 globally derived from, this, from the method. The going through it and and um, well, we can see the uh, hot spots in, in Asia, for example, uh, also in Europe, North America, and so on. And when you are looking at the trend, seven years trend, linear trend, seven years, um, for sure it is what you expect. You see the decrease in Europe, North America, and a very heavy increase in the Chinese region and the major increase 
have in this near east. Um, this is a kind of an artifact uh, due to the uh, South Atlantic anomaly, uh, where the satellite signal usually gets disturbed. Uh, since the uh, satellite uh, the, um, usually um, leaves the magnetic shield of the Earth and is um, impacted by uh, very, very strong radiation from the, from the solar system. Um, but with such a sign, you cannot only determine the trend over the whole field, but also a trend, uh, for example, for the weekday, for the day of the week. And uh, we determine the uh, end of the tropospheric in a two cycle in, in Europe. Uh, you see a drop, a very significant drop on Sundays and uh, also Saturdays. Relatively, it's uh, in the inner two, uh, and on the atmosphere is a bit reduced, but on Sunday, uh, you see that this is our day where uh, we, we may press, uh, stop working. And, so and if we do the same analysis for the Middle East, um, you see a different behavior, and in fact, the Friday drops up. So activity is reduced on Friday. And uh, when looking to China, for example, you don't see anything. You don't see any trend around the week. So the people of China don't stop working. They produce all of all of it. So this is, this is really the urgent need for all kinds of things. We need very long lasting instruments. And as we already heard from the Lancet side, uh, with Barbara Wein. Uh, it's impossible to make uh, to, to gain a view on the system by just having snapshots. Uh, this is just to mention that we also have uh, um, developed algorithms uh, to determine uh, dust, which is transported uh, in the air. So, this is uh, in fact a uh, desert dust, which is mobilized. We will need it later on. And now uh, it's, it's time for another long time series because um, at DLR over um, the uh, NOAA ADHRR instruments have been received for uh, nearly from, the, from their beginning, from the 1980s. Uh, all, nearly all of and, and the advantage is when you, when you record the, the satellite overcast directly um, and uh, directly at the overcast, you receive an improved resolution of about one by one kilometer. And so, at the hour of the open access, the 30 plus X years, 35 years, many time series of AVHR observations. And this time series is now going to be reprocessed. Uh, in, a, in an institutional, in an internal project at our institute. And this is just to, to give you a flavor of uh, what physical parameters we, we have uh, for this time series. So, this is the cloud, the cloud physical parameters, like for example, cloud coverage and other parameters, we need to, um, other cloud parameters. Um, this is snow cover, snow cover in. Uh, when, when uh, uh, determining trends uh, for the snow cover, long time series are also briefly for sure. Um, this is the sea surface temperature that we have of this, this time series. And it can also be, now we're getting uh, a bit off of here, but um, this can also be used for holiday planning. So um, if we are in a peak like this, uh, and um, we know that this beach is approximately here at the low folds. Um, and when looking into the uh, determined um, uh, sea surface temperature, we see it's not worth taking the bath. So this was in fact uh, I was doing approximately one year ago on the northern edge of the low folds. And it's 
So I was really convinced and looking into the data that it's not working. But you can also make serious studies with it. For example, we are here in the current, and uh, you see the uh, land surface temperature at night for the heat wave in 2002. This is before the heat wave, you see the blue dot which marks temperatures at, let's say, whatever this range is, and this is during the heat wave. Temperatures during night. So you can make studies, uh, you can use time series also for determining um, particular periods. Moreover, all the information we gain uh, can be used uh, to derive health sensitive information. Um, so I talked about uh, the, the air quality modeling activities. Um, these modeling activities are by space based instruments. And uh, when combining um, the, the major pollutants with health related factors, uh, you, you can obtain the uh, aggregated risk, uh, which gives you a feeling of um, well, how uh, unhealthy the particular situation is and gives you the chance to, to forecast uh, any. any any inconvenient situation uh, so that you get medicines and stuff, etc. Um, moreover, air pollution uh, is a significant uh, health risk, and uh, about 3.2 million premature deaths per year have been uh, determined um, in general. Uh, moreover, all the Solar energy, um, the, the concept of solar energy research. Um, so, base case information, snow power, aerosols, plus the parameters can also be joined uh, to determine the output of uh, uh, solar um, power. Um, another thing is uh, what, we, what we can uh, support. Um, are monitoring uh, volcanic plumes. So this is the eruption of the Puyehu in uh, Chile in uh, South America. Wow. And um, so we determined the ash being released by the volcano. And this ash could more or less be traced once around the globe. It made it through once around the globe. And by calculating back to we could determine the um, uh, source function, that means the emission height versus the time. So, so we knew at which date uh, the emission was uh, released into the atmosphere. Which had. In fact, the photo you saw before, you saw in the background, that uh, must have been taken around uh, that period uh, when we had these particular spikes and this very solitude.
Very quick, um, Julian. You mentioned registered users. This does uh, does it mean that um, the data sets are accessible only after you register? It depends. So some data sets are only accessible after registration. Uh, it's it's depending on the on the owner of the data set. And uh, the data sets we produce uh, are free of charge and can be accessed without any registration. But data sets obtained from other institutions. Uh, may be only available after registration, but for free. So they don't, you don't have to pay anything, you just have to register. Okay, so we'll go on to the last speaker. Oh, yes, one quick question. Quick question. Yes. <laughs> It was unfortunately uh, do not have an, uh, a local authority. Do not, do not have a local authority that pays for services. But we are working extensively in the field of airport services uh, to provide a sustainable um, uh, regional air quality model for us, uh, for the Bavarian state of Bavaria in southern Germany, and uh, hopefully we get some. Currently, we just provide the 